Hello there, my name's Ewan and as you know I'm a self-confessed astronomy addict. I was at the Hearst Monsoon Astronomy Festival in September, uh, which was great. I got to meet up with Zoltan from 365 Astronomy and he brought me this. This is the ZWO ASI 178 MC colour camera. It has a 6 megapixel, 6.4 megapixel sensor. It will take pictures at uh, up to 60 frames a second with a resolution of approximately 3090 by 2000 pixels, 6.4 megapixels. Uh, but it'll also do exactly the same resolution at exposures up to about a thousand seconds. So what you have is a camera that is, uh, I think originally it was primarily designed to be a uh, planetary and lunar camera, but it's damn good at deep sky as well. It comes with a lot of extras, it comes with a lot of uh, built-in bits and pieces that are fantastic. It comes with a lot of free software, uh, including uh, you get access to the Astro Live program, which is currently in a beta test, but it allows you to do a live stacking of your images as you're taking them, which for Deep Sky is just phenomenal. Uh, and that's free. For a non-ZWO camera, it's a hundred pounds. It's a lot of money, a lot of money you don't have to spend if you have one of these. Let's run through some details. Okay, first of all, you need to ignore the fact that this camera is currently sitting on a piece of aluminium and a heat sink and a fan. Uh, the reason for that is that I've actually attached a cooling system to this particular little camera. Uh, the details of which uh, are based on the design by Martin from Astronomy for Beginners. And here you go, a nice little link to the video that Martin did that has basically given me the, the design for, for, for my Peltier cooler. Okay, now let's get on to the camera itself. Uh, first of all, if you look down here, you will see that what you actually have is a fairly large Sony sensor. If you compare it to, say, the uh, ASI 120, uh, it's massive, it's huge. Is, as I said before 6.4 megapixels and because of the pixel size and density you get a fabulous image you get some really really good detail with this camera can you imagine stacking something like that with uh, with a, a, a picture of, of say Jupiter or Saturn the images that you can get back are quite frankly incredible the nice thing about this particular camera is it is USB 3 rather than USB 2. It is backwards compatible to USB 2, it's just with USB 3 you do get the faster frame rates, which can be particularly important if you're doing planetary. It's not so important if you're doing deep sky, but it does help that when you are um, taking, say, a three minute exposure, it does return the data very very quickly for that exposure so it just moves straight on to the next one there's virtually no delay uh, it's a guide camera as well if you want it to be sorry behind this little black box unfortunately that's in the way a bit you can see you've got your standard guider port so that if you do ever decide you want to upgrade to a different camera or if you just want to use this with your DSLR as a guide camera you certainly can. Uh, to be brutally honest, my DSLR is only 10 megapixels. Uh, this is, as I said, six, but with the uh, fit file progression, file uh, compression, it, it does very well. Here, I just want to show you one of the pictures that I've taken with this camera. Apologies for the fact that it's on my laptop, but um, you get the idea. That's the Dumbbell Nebula. We've got the reds coming through, we've got a lovely blue image. Stars have still got a little bit of colour in there. That's more my processing technique rather than 
anything else that's leached the colour out of the stars. But you can see it's come through very, very well. Uh, and that's uncropped. I haven't cropped that image at all. Oh, no, actually, tell a lie. I think I did take a little bit of the edge off. But um, essentially, what you see is what you get. That is the size of the, uh, the actual image as taken on there. My Skywatcher 150 PDS, so only a six inch aperture Newtonian scope, and I'm getting images like that returning from this little camera. Two minute exposures, by the way, uh, nothing more than that. That's about an hour's worth of data at two minutes per exposure, and the files were then run through. They're, downloaded as FIT files, converted to TIFF files with some darks in uh, a program called PIP, that's P-I-P-P, -P, and then I used Deep Sky Stacker to stack the files, uh, followed by uh, a bit of processing in Photoshop. Now one thing I do want to make clear, I have built a Peltier cooler, I have used the Peltier cooler, I did not use the Peltier cooler when taking this image. This image is straight out the tin. This is what you will get if you buy this camera, plug it in and start running it through SharpCAD. It's fantastic. So you know it can do deep sky. You know it can do planetary. Uh, the ASI 120 can do planetary. That's a much, much, much weaker camera than this one. As with all the ASIs, you also get your... Uh, little meteor nose piece. So all you do is unscrew your normal nose piece, which is going to be too tight. Here we go. This comes with it as well, by the way. This then screws into place. It's slightly focusable. You can see there's a little screw just here. Turn sideways so you can see it. Actually, turn that and you can see it. There we go, that's much easier to see. Yep, little screw on there. Um, that just allows you to adjust this up and down to, to, to amend the focus. Although I must admit, mine came with perfect focus straight out the box. The one thing it does have now is though is a fingerprint because that was me just now putting that on there. Oops, sorry about that, jabs. Okay, let's bring that into focus. There we go. Now, that little lens there allows you to use this as a meteor camera so you just plonk it straight on your tripod it does have the hole in there for the uh, it's the uh, quarter inch width width so the standard adapter hole for your tripod it's also got the four m4 holes at 39 millimeters apart uh, so that you can bolt it down if you want to i've got this uh, attached to my cooler with nylon uh, bolts so I can easily take this off quite happily without damaging anything and uh, then pop it straight onto a tripod not that I need to um, uh, uh, to be honest it's not the way I want to use this camera and if I was using this as an all sky camera for meteor viewing and for cloud checking then I wouldn't have put a Peltier cooler on it uh, I just don't think it would have been necessary. So it would have just plonked straight on without me doing anything. But it's fantastic that you get that little lens because that lens works on a standard T2 thread. So a standard 42 uh, by 75 millimeter thread, which means up there you can see my QHY5, which is a mono camera, um, currently used as my guide camera. If I want to, I can attach that little lens to that camera and use that as a uh, an all sky camera, which, to be brutally honest, I'm far more likely to do than muck about with this one trying to do it. This would give great images. The QH will give acceptable images, uh, but this is far more used to me as a deep sky camera. Now, I've, uh, as I mentioned the cooler, I have done a video about that as well, so that's also available on my blog. 
Uh, I will also on my written blog be writing up some details and I'll try and include as much as I can in the way of prices on there. Now currently at the time of uh, doing this video I believe that this camera is in very short supply. It is however only £370 I believe from 365 Astronomy. Uh, it's fantastic. It's considering you get so many different cameras in one it's probably the most versatile camera in its price bracket that I know of and to be brutally honest it's blooming good as well hold on a moment I'll turn this round so a planetary camera that also does deep sky uh, can be used as an all sky camera and can also be used just as a cloud checker poking through your observatory if you really want to. It's also a guide camera and it's brilliant value for money. I've added the Peltier, there are details online about this. It is by far the best purchase I've made. I love this camera, I think it's worth every single penny. Uh, if I was asked again would I buy it yes I would quite happily without a doubt I would buy this over a, a DSLR anytime in fact my uh, Canon uh, 600D astro modified camera uh, I've got rid of uh, I sold it because I don't really need it anymore uh, that was an 18 megapixel DSLR camera with far more noise than this little jobby has, even without the cooler. It was cumbersome to stack in Deep Sky Stacker because of the size of the images. And I found as well that because of the distances that were involved between the sensor and the mirrors and everything like that, what you ended up with was a far wider field uh, in your picture than you're getting with this little jobby. This one, uh, as I showed you with my picture of the Dumbbell Nebula, it gives a nice field of view. It's easily uh, able to cope with some very small distant objects and some very large distant objects, as well as do moon shots, planetary shots. And it will work with different scopes. I've used this camera with both my Newt back there and with my uh, refractor, my uh, 80 by 600 uh, refractor from, again, 365 Astronomy. Uh, and it's worked brilliantly. It's been fantastic. And it's so easy to use. You, you, you just plug it in and it works it just does it it does what you want it to do and it does it really really well um a lot of astronomy is very complicated and a lot of astronomy astrophotography is and they call it a dark art but really it's just uh, knowing what what works and what doesn't this works it really does buy one buy two guide with one image with the other one by three have a dual plate two scopes one refractor one new and one guide camera there you go you're set i'll see you next time